Hello, this is Business Live from BBC News with Susanna Streeter and David Eads. America edges closer to massive tax reforms, but will they really deliver President Trump's promised boost to the world's largest economy? Live from London, that is our top story on Friday, the 1st of December. The president lights up the Christmas tree. He's hoping senators will give him the gift he wants. But can the US really afford the biggest tax changes in a generation? Also in the programme, the world's largest lithium-ion battery gets up and running in Australia. So will it spark a global energy revolution? And as always, we'll get all the latest from the global financial markets. This is the picture in Europe as exchanges open. And we'll be getting the inside track on the bumpy ride that Uber have been uh, on this week, as well as Bitcoin's roller coaster ride with our tech guru, Rory Kethlin Jones. And December is finally upon us. This weekend set to be the busiest for Christmas tree sales here in the UK, but amid warnings that glittery decorations are bad for the environment. We want to know if you use the same ones every year or do you buy them new? Just uh, use the hashtag BBCBizLive. Hello and welcome to Business Live. The United States is on course for its largest tax reforms in more than 30 years, but hasn't quite got there yet. If last minute disagreements can be overcome though, President Trump's big hope is that the reforms will boost growth for the world's biggest economy and that could eventually make the rest of the world richer too. Firstly, it will be very expensive, costing the government one and a half trillion dollars over the next decade. Now, some of that is expected to be offset by higher economic growth, but most would be added to the US national debt already at 20 trillion dollars. Now, that is what's still bothering some in the Senate. Who would benefit? Well, the big winners would be US firms who would see corporation tax slash from 35 percent to around 20 percent. And the White House claims that the average American household would also be better off by between $4,000 and $9,000 a year. But some critics say the plan really favours the wealthy. Others dispute the idea that a handout to firms will trickle down to the wider economy. Not including the banks, US companies are already sitting on $1.9 trillion cash pile. And some have said they use ca tax cuts to give more money to shareholders. Raises some big questions. Pippa Malmgren used to be an economic advisor to President George W. Bush and is founder of the Business Advisors DRPM Research Group. Pippa, thanks for joining us. There are some huge questions there. I mean, an awful lot of money to spend effectively for these tax cuts. How far, assuming this all goes through, of course, how far could they recoup that through, uh, through improved tax revenues, do you think? Well, the Republican view is that if you lower tax rates, you will increase business activity and business investment. What's interesting is that businesses keep saying our intention is actually to do share buybacks, which is not so productive for the economy. Now, that's the big companies. Now, that doesn't mean smaller companies won't benefit from this, and they will invest. But the question is, what's the magnitude of the impact? Is, is share buybacks? necessarily a bad thing. I mean, the, the Dow's going to have another field day for a few more months, probably, if that's the case. But is there any benefit to that, nonetheless, economically? Well, there's another way of thinking about it. Not so much mm. a benefit, but by stimulating the economy with more capital, you create more inflationary conditions. We already have a little inflation. As it picks up, people say, I can't stay in cash. I need to get invested because your money's being eroded when you sit in cash in an inflation environment. So in that sense, it stimulates, but it's not considered usually the, the ideal way to stimulate the economy. No, and no. A lot of people are really concerned about this. There has been some pushback, hasn't there, against this uh, deal, particularly over the last 12 hours. And there's a lot of concern that these are projections, aren't they, for economic growth. There's no guarantee that there will be a boost. And we saw there in the numbers how much it could cost as far as the, the deficit is concerned. Well, the real issue is that the economy is going well. And so people do expect that it will go better if you give it the stimulus. 
the actual debate about the substance of this bill is not so much about the substance. Frankly, it's about the fighting with Trump over what he's going to be allowed to do and not allowed to do. Senator McCain, who's very annoyed with Donald Trump for picking on him personally and saying he wasn't a real war hero, has said this is not going to be the Trump bill. It's going to be the McCain bill. So he's taken it into the Senate and taken control of the process. That kind of accounts for more than the actual substantive Th that's debate. Not going to, that's not going to wash with uh, Donald Trump if it goes through and it succeeds, of course, though. This is his baby. He'll take the pre uh, the, the, um, uh, the Well, plaudits, well, we'll see. He'll try. But the Senate, they can absolutely put their fingerprints and their signature on this thing in a way that will let them take a good deal of the credit, which, by the way, they want going into the midterm elections. Mm. And do you think some of the discounts, for example, that the states currently offer as far as tax bills are concerned, do you think those will be debated in the Senate? Will that be some of the sticking points? Or what other factors do you think that they'll, they'll bring in to amend the bill? Uh, you know, what they'll actually do in the next 24, 48 hours is not so clear. It is a very detail-oriented process. There are thousands of pages involved in this kind of legislation, which, interestingly, no single senator actually reads. Only their <laughs> staff read the parts that are relevant to their state. So it's the traditional very messy process, and we're all just going to have to wait to hear what they conclude. Much more horse trading to come. Pippa, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. OK, let's take a look at some of the stories making the news. The Irish foreign minister has told the BBC that the EU can't be asked to take a leap into the dark when it comes to the Brexit negotiations. Simon Coveney said more progress needed to be made on a solution over how the border between the Republic and Northern Ireland will work if progress is to be made on trade talks. Amazon has launched a version of its successful voice-based digital assistant, Alexa. This is aimed at business. Office workers will be able to use the firm's smart speakers to set up meetings with colleagues, book conference rooms, do other basic tasks as well. Uh, there have been some concerns raised over privacy in meetings where sensitive information is being discussed. Here in the UK, the Royal Bank of Scotland, which is still 72% owned by the government, says it's cutting almost 700 jobs and closing more than 250 branches. The lender is trying to reduce costs as more customers move to online banking. Trade unions have raised questions about the move. The Japanese car maker Nissan has become the latest foreign company to seek arbitration against the Indian authorities. The company believes it is entitled to $770 million as part of the agreements it reached to set up a factory near Chennai. Reports suggest there are more than 20 similar cases pending. The Indian government has not yet responded. The world's largest lithium-ion battery has started delivering power to the electricity grid in South Australia. It's being built by Tesla, which is of course best known for its electric cars and aims to end the state's energy problems. Well, let's uh, join Mariko Oi, who is in our Asia Business Hub. Uh, they've created this thing and they've done it in, uh, ahead of schedule. Indeed, David. And if you remember, it all started as a bet on Twitter. Uh, it was actually an Australian software entrepreneur who asked Elon Musk, of course, the boss of Tesla, if he was really serious about helping South Australia uh, after the state suffered a statewide blackout. Well, Mr. Musk said yes, he was. And if the battery wasn't built within 100 days, the state would get it for free. The countdown started on the 30th of September uh, after approval from regulators and Tesla actually managed to finish it in about 60 days. So I guess the state would have to pay now. Uh, as uh, Susanna mentioned, the plant uh, started uh, dispersing uh, electricity today. Uh, it's located in Jamestown, about 200 kilometers north of Adelaide. OK, very cool. Many thanks for that. A lot of buzz surrounding Tesla there in Australia. Well, let's check in with their financial markets now. And in Hong Kong, further losses in technology firms offset some gains in energy companies, as you can see, um, uh, to start off with. But then the Hang Seng dropped back a little. Quite a choppy session for the Nikkei as well. Can't see that on the board, but it did finish the session a little higher. The Dow is continuing its epic climb, surging above 24,000 for the first time as the US Senate moved towards approving that massive 
tax cut package. Well, oil prices edged higher as OPEC's decision to extend production limits took place. Now, what's the picture for the European indices at the moment? The FTSE has opened lower. Uh, the DAX you see in Frankfurt slightly higher. The Cacahont in Paris lower. Yesterday, they were all lower uh, because really of a stronger euro and a stronger pound. Well, Samir Hussein now has all the details about what's ahead on Wall Street today. It's finally Friday, but it could be a very busy end to the week. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average crossed a milestone on Thursday, 24,000 points for the first time. Now, U.S. markets are just downright euphoric at the prospect of major tax reform. So we'll continue to watch what happens in Washington and how U.S. markets react. In other business news, we see that light vehicle sales will have fallen ever so slightly compared to the month before. And we're seeing that construction spending is going to be up by about 0.5% for the month of October. And overall factory spending will have dropped ever so slightly from the previous month. Right, joining us now is Lucy McDonald from Alliance Global Investors. Lucy, right. thanks very much for joining us. And so, I, I mean, after everything we've seen coming from New York, Asia playing it very cool, waiting, presumably, for this tax reform bill to pass or not. Yes, and there's um, certainly some anticipation of, of this bill. We've been waiting now uh, for, for months. Mm. And it looks very, very close. And the, it's better priced into markets now, I think. So it's, uh, you know, if, it, if it passes, there will be you know, some um, positive benefit. But if you look at the, the sort of the Trump trade type stocks, so the more cyclicals and the industrials um, and financials, they have been moving. It's also the domestics and small caps. It was um, interesting that you say it's been priced in. Many were saying before it reached this point, the bill, that actually the markets had priced all of the tax changes in. But still, you see this epic climb, don't you? Why do you think the market is still going forward? And, and do you actually think when it's passed, or if it is passed, there won't be a further climb? I think much more of it is priced in now, so the probability of it getting through has been priced in gradually, and that's why you've seen this, you know, that particular area of, of the market doing better. Um, and at the same time, some of the other areas of the market, so the more growth, the you know, technology and, and healthcare, slightly you know, coming back to fund some of those areas. So you've seen some more rotation in the market. It's a, you know, similar to what we saw in a year ago, but, but not anywhere near as drastic. Um, and that makes sense. So it seems to me it's been, been priced quite rationally. Just got time to have a look at what's happening with oil as well. Prices yeah. going up, OPEC reaching a deal, the Russians leading it. To, and that's to, to keep production down for another 12 plus months. Yes, yeah, so that's extended it um, further. And clearly that agreement um, so far has stabilised the, the oil price. And we've, we've seen it sort of coming up. And the, the sector following is a very close correlation between the oil price and the oil sector. And so you've seen that now for six months. And now that the um, Saudis and the Russians, who are 20% of, of the total supply, have agreed to extend, I would have thought, you know, that should continue. And it's still an area of the market where you can find some value. Um, it's not necessarily the highest growth or the highest quality over the market, but there's still some value and some yield there. And as we know, yield is still something that people are really looking for. Absolutely. Lucy, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. OK, still to come, Uber's bumpy ride and Bitcoin's roller coaster. We catch up on another big week of technology news with our tech guru, Rory Catherine-Jones. You're with Business Live from BBC News. <laughs>